Do you ever wonder why some websites feel so easy to use while others leave you frustrated? That's the magic of UX. In this video, we're diving into user experience or UX, a field that combines psychology, design, research, and technology to create digital interactions that are not just efficient, but also enjoyable and memorable. So what is UX? UX or user experience refers to how you interact with a product or service. Imagine you are visiting a website. Is it easy to navigate? Do you find what you need without frustration? UX ensures these interactions are smooth and satisfying. Now think about your last online shopping experience. Was it smooth or did you struggle to find what you needed? That's UX in action. UX isn't just about looks, it's about creating an intuitive journey that feels right for the user. This approach to human-centered design ensures that design teams make decisions based on feedback rather than assumptions. Now let's explore more and start with some of the fundamental components of UX. Starting with usability. Usability means ease of use. A classic example is Google search. Simple yet powerful, enabling anyone to search effortlessly. Then accessibility. You need to ensure that everyone, including people with disabilities, can use the product effectively. The inclusion of alternative text for images and support for screen readers are common practices on websites to improve accessibility. Usefulness. A product must solve a problem or meet a need. Think about how WhatsApp and Telegram have made instant communication easy and effective. Now desirability. Desirability is about the emotional and aesthetic appeal. Apple's elegant designs are a perfect example of that. Credibility is also crucial. Credibility builds trust. It includes the accuracy of information and the security of transactions. And is of finding. Users should easily find what they need. Amazon's intuitive search and browsing are great examples. When you're working as a UX designer, you usually start with user research, which involves understanding user needs, desires, and problems throughout interviews, usability tests, data analysis, and other methodologies. This research forms the foundation for creating prototypes and wireframes, which are continuously tested and refined based on user feedback. Keep in mind that UX design is a cyclical process. The steps involved don't always follow a straight line and may look back as needed. Each company's unique situation will determine which aspects of the UX process are prioritized or possible at any given moment. In some cases, you may not have direct access to users and instead receive data or search results from another department. And that's perfectly fine. You can still use this information to start solving the problem at end, adapting your approach as needed based on the resources available. The key is to remain flexible and user-focused, ensuring that the final product meets the needs of its audience. In the UX process, you can use various design frameworks from design thinking, double diamond, lean UX, agile UX, and so others. But to make this very easy to understand, let's go through these six steps. Step one, define project and scope. In this initial phase, establish the project's objectives, scope, and timeline. You should collaborate with stakeholders from business, design, product and technical teams to identify the problem and set clear expectations. Step two, conduct UX research. In this step, you work on empathy to understand the users and analyze the market and competition. You carry out user research, example, personas, journey maps, market analysis, competitor analysis, and product analysis. In the step three, it's ideate and create rough drafts. Then after you start to understand the business and user needs, you may start generate initial design ideas and solutions by doing some sketching, paper prototyping, and wireframing to develop low fidelity prototypes that will explore different user flows and layouts. 
Step four, design high fidelity mockups and prototypes. So after getting some feedback on your drafts, you refine and detail the design by developing high fidelity mockups and iterative prototypes that closely resemble the final product and you ensure consistency with design systems. Step five, test. So now that you have some high fidelity designs, you should validate and identify issues. In this step, you will test your prototypes, hopefully with users to gather feedback, refine usability and ensure accessibility. Step six, it's the implementation and launch. In this stage, you hand off your designs to the development team to develop and release the product and ensure it meets the expectations. There are no rules to follow this sequentially. Often UX teams prototype and test during the defined stage while sharing ideas, or they emphasize with participants during usability testing. This is an iterative process where UX teams continuously move throughout these stages, testing and refining their designs. Now pay close attention. I want to give you two very important considerations on your journey to becoming a UX designer that you should take into account, as many people don't share this right from the start. Adopting a UX culture in a company brings many benefits, but it also presents challenges that cannot be ignored. Firstly, there can be a resistance to change as the introduction of new practices and processes is not always well received. In addition, the costs and time involved into investing in UX can be significant and integration between departments such as design, development and marketing is essential to avoid inconsistencies. Another important point is the measurement of UX success, which can be challenging because many of its benefits are based on user feelings and experience, which can be harder to measure with numbers. In addition, it's crucial to find a balance between user needs and business objectives, as these two areas are not always perfectly aligned. Then you could have scalability as another challenge, especially as the company grows and expands, making it difficult to maintain a consistent UX culture. Finally, it is important to manage realistic expectations of what UX can achieve, thus avoiding frustration. A well-established UX culture requires commitment from the entire organization, continuous investment, and a careful balance between user needs and business objectives. Companies that prioritize the user experience at all stages of development tend to have more satisfied customers, more effective products, and greater brand loyalty. The impact of good UX is profound and far-reaching for business going beyond simple customer satisfaction. It can increase brand loyalty, improve conversion rates, reduce support costs, and even increase revenues. During the pandemic, rapid digitalization has required many companies to improve their online presence. Those who have invested in UX have managed not only to create functional products, but also to provide positive experiences for users, resulting in a larger and more loyal customer base. UX is a continuous process of discovery and improvement with no ready-made recipe for success. Each project requires a unique approach based on specific user needs and business objectives. It is crucial for you, the UX designer and the company to maintain a user-centered mindset, always being willing to learn and adapt to changes in user needs and the market. The true essence of UX is to create products that make people's life easier and more enjoyable, exceeding their expectations. And that's it. If you found value in this video, hit the like button and leave a comment. Your feedback helps others in the design community discover this video. Next video will be about UI design. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day.